Okay, today we're going to look at the second step in creating an I2C bus master in Verilog. We have our first step that we derived previously, which is the state machine that drives the data bus. And today we're going to look at the timing issues in how to derive the clock. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to file, save as, and make a copy of my code. I'm going to call this step two. And it doesn't show up right away in the project, so I'll have to add a copy of source. And we're going to add a copy of step two. And it's showing up now as step one, even though it's in the file step two. And the reason is that it's got the same module name as our previous step. So we're just going to change the module name and save, and we'll see that ISE automatically updates the name over here. Um, the next change I want to make is I want to make this the top project. So we're going to set as top module. So now if I go and build, we'll build this module rather than my previous version. This way we can keep step one around if we want to look back at it. Um, if we look back at the timing diagram, at least this is from Wikipedia's version of I squared C. We see that the clock is dropping while we're changing data, and on the rising edge, that data has to be latched up. So the idea here is that we're going to make a clock that is triggering as we change the data. We also see that the clock isn't always on. Um, our clock is only going to be pulsing uh, when we're in certain states in our state machine. So we'll come back to this diagram in just a minute. In fact, the states that we want our clock to pulse in are going to be the idle, or sorry, we do not want the clock to pulse in, our idle, start, and at this point, stop. All of the other ones, they can, the clock is okay to pulse. So if I just start off, um, we could try to put the clock logic here in the main state machine. Um, but then we have to deal with the clock changing and this logic running. And it really starts to get a little uh, complex. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make another always block. And so we start off with our always um, we'll pick the positive edge, um, we'll begin and end, we'll have our if reset is equal to 1, begin and end, else begin and end. So kind of the standard way that we deal with these blocks. Um, since we're only driving the I2C clock line, um, if reset is equal to 1, I2C clock um, will be equal to 1. And our else case is we're going to check the state, and depending on the state, we're going to drive the clock one way or another. So if state is equal to uh, state idle, or state is equal to state start, or state is equal to state stop. If this is the case, if we're in any of these states, the clock is going to be high. And if we're not in the state, we're going to make the clock pulse. Now, this is kind of what we've been doing in the test bench, um, only we are, we've been using delays in the test bench. We can't use delays in synthesizable Verilog. So if we put a pound sign here, then we won't be able to actually generate this module for the FPGA. Um, it'll work fine in simulation, but not in uh, implementation. So in this case, whenever the clock, the, the master clock changes, um, we will go ahead and flip the clock when we're not in one of these states. All right, so this is a first start. Um, I'll kind of give you a hint and say that this isn't going to work as it is, um, but it's a first start. So let's see exactly what's going on. So we'll go to the simulation. Um, I already have a module here. We'll remove it so you can see exactly how to start the test up again. We're going to start with our code from test one like we did before. 
and we're going to file save as test step two. And test step two is not here, so I'm going to add source, and I want to grab test step two. And the association here is listed as all. I don't want test step two to show up in the implementation logic. It's only for simulation. So I'm going to change the association here just to simulation. I'll hit OK. And again, we're going to get a warning here about duplicate design fan. Um, again, the module name needs to change. So make sure that down here the file name is test step two. We'll change the module name here. Um, and of course, the module name here is now step two. Having done all of that, we're now able to run our code. Right, so we're in simulate. We'll do simulate behavioral model. Um, I see we have an error, so we'll go back here and we'll fix this error. Um, it's not I squared C clock, it's SCL. So at this point, um, the simulator has run our code, and if we click on the life preserver, we'll see what's gone on here. Um, we see our master clock, we see our I squared C clock, and kind of an odd thing has happened. If you remember from this picture, what we wanted to see was when we entered the start state that the clock would remain high while data would drop. Um, and that's not really what's happened here. So what we can do is we can add some more signals. So we'll go here to the UUT, the unit under test, and I'm going to add the state to the wave window. So I'm going to drag the state variable over here. And I don't feel like uh, manually converting all of these from binary to decimal. So I'm going to change the radix to decimal, and we can go back and rerun our code. This time, when we look at our, our output, we can actually see what the state variable is at different spots. And what we see here is that we were in the start state for just one clock cycle. And so um, there's we entered the start state through the negative clock cycle. We transitioned into uh, the positive edge of the next clock cycle and that was um, sending the data. So we weren't in here long enough for um, the data to drop, which is kind of um, a bug. So we can go back to our step two code and if we look at this we see that in state start I squared C data was 1, and it really should be 0. So we'll fix that, and if we do a relaunch, we look back at our example. Now when we're in state 1, we see that um, clock pulses, and the clock is um, the I squared C clock, rather, is still high, data has dropped, um, and now we start pulsing out our uh, address. Now, one of the challenges here is if you look at this clock, at no point is the data going to be 1 during the address part of this. Because on the positive edge of the clock, of the um, I squared C clock, we're changing the data for the next clock. And part of it is because they're in the same phase. So the master clock is pulsing twice for every I squared C clock. Um, but they're being changed on the same phase. So as this clock is changing, this guy is changing, this guy is changing all at the same time. And what we really want is we want the I squared C clock to be half a cycle later so that the I squared C timing diagram 
would match what's expected of the standard. So for example, if we look back over here, um, we're changing the data and then the clock comes up on positive edge. Um, we're dropping, we're changing the data during the low edge or the low level and we're reading it on the top level. It's positive edge triggered for the target device and this is not at all how we're driving it. So we're going to go back to our Verilog code and if I change the logic the, here to be a neg edge clock then if we relaunch What I see now is we enter into our start state. Um, we go through one clock period where the data is low. On the positive edge, while the uh, I squared C clock is low, we latch out the first bit of the address. We go through state transition. So we have the positive edge, we want to keep it high, uh, stays high until the low edge of the I squared C clock and it drops. And we're in pretty good shape now, except that we have one problem. And that problem is that we should have gone through, in state two, eight address bits. We only went through one, two, three, well, really just kind of four. One, two, three, four. So the clocks are now not just out of, well, they're back in phase, but they're uh, not the same. With. So we're not running the state machine at the same rate that we're running the I squared C clock. So what this tells me is what we need to do is actually change this logic so that we're going to be um, living on the I squared C clock. This won't work actually, but I'll show you why. Because we're living on the same logic as the I squared C clock, then what's happened here is um, we never get started because we're in the uh, idle state and the idle state isn't running the I squared C clock and so we can never leave the idle state. So we do something a little bit more clever than trying to drive the clocks directly. And probably what we really want to do is um, essentially treat the signal, instead of as the actual clock, treat it as an enable signal. So we're going to make an I squared C SCL enable. And during reset, the clock will be disabled. And during um, idle, start, and stop, the clock will be disabled. And at all other times, the clock will be enabled. And we're going to want to do this from the negative edge of the clock. And we've got to now sort out how we're going to drive the clock. Well. Really, what we want to do is, instead of having the clock be driven as a register, we're going to change it to be driven by a wire. We're going to assign that wire to be equal to um, if I squared C clock enable is equal to 0, then it's going to be a 1. Otherwise, it's going to equal clock. So now we've added some behavioral uh, combinational logic um, here. We've used the assign statement to augment what's happening with our state machine. So our state machine logic is running at the speed of the clock. We're bringing on enable or disable, um, and that's combining in a combinational way with the uh, existing clock. And we have an error. Oh, we have an error here in our code. 
fact, this was an error before. If we had tried to run this code and synthesize it, um, we were actually modifying a register in two different places. And that's you can do that in simulation, but not in uh, synthesis. This should be I squared C FCL. Okay, so now let's see what this has done to our waveform. So we have our reset condition, reset condition drops. We go into start. Um, start, by the time we're ready to leave start, we have drop data while clock remains hot. We've gone into um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, address strokes. Um, it looks like it's happening at the same time, but remember the state we're in, we might be in state three, but we're in state three during that last transition while the data is still the last transition from state two. So this is one cycle ahead of this one. Um, but we're back to these being in phase with each other. So if that's the case, we can go back and we can make this equal to not clock. And so now we have during state two, we have a one, a zero, a one, a zero, 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 zero. Um, that's the seven bit address plus the write command that we're strobing out. Um, that's the valid waveform for an I squared C bus. So this worked out exactly as we wanted it to. Um, we now have our data and our clock. So we have one more step to do, and actually two more steps to do, um, and they'll be in their own videos. So this is how we fix the clock up for I squared C. Thank you.